Helldivers 2 has lost 90% of its player base since launch. Helldivers 2 is dying. Dead game. Game is dead. This has been the rhetoric that I've seen thrown around not only by the internet at large, but particularly by media outlets and gaming journalists alike. They seem to be creating a sense of worry and concern about a game a large portion of us currently love investing hours into. Inevitably, I've found myself asking the question, should I be worried? Should we be worried as a player base that our beloved game is spiraling into a pit of dead games that we used to know and love only to be forgotten for the rest of eternity? The answer is absolutely not. In today's video, I want to explain why we shouldn't be worried and offer my opinion and thoughts on this topic. It comes up a lot in my live streams and I've found myself talking about this topic with a number of people. I do think people need to relax and reflect on things realistically and not get too caught up in the headlines and journalistic sensationalism that is currently doing the rounds. Helldivers losing 90% of its player base is a fantastic headline and it can also not be denied. This is a relatively accurate point to make. There are graphs and data to back it up and we'll be looking into them in a moment but i do want to start by pointing out that this type of headline is designed to get clicks and grab attention and it does a great job of that folks don't get it mistaken the data does indeed paint a picture in line with this point but what it does not do is take into consideration the context and the overall lay of the landscape in terms of how player bases behave after a title releases and also perhaps most importantly how games like helldivers 2 a co-op horde shooter perform in general. Helldivers 2 has been a roaring success. Don't get it mistaken. Sony revealed back in May that Helldivers 2 is the fastest selling game PlayStation has ever released, selling 12 million copies in the first 12 weeks. Of course, this was also fueled by Steam sales, but I don't think anyone can deny that this is nothing short of a highly successful launch from sales perspectives, maybe not so much from a technical and customer satisfaction perspective, mind you, but that's not the point of this video. Let's not forget this success, this colossal launch with player peaks reaching around 450k plus was completely unexpected. What was also completely unexpected was how big a cultural phenomenon this game would prove to be. It launched with around 60k players on the first day and this number swiftly quadrupled due to, well, the explosion of players rallying behind the game due to its tight, exciting co-op gameplay and investment in the satirical, democratic universe that Arrow had created for us that was much akin to Starship Troopers and that really was something that they leaned into and has paid off massively. But remember, this was not supposed to happen, folks, but it did. Call it the right place at the right time, whatever you want, but this unprecedented success could perhaps be seen as a double-edged sword. Critics, journalists, and perhaps most importantly, the player base, and that's me included, by the way, have incredibly high expectations of how this game should now be being handled by Arrowhead following its launch. And I think that this is really what has motivated me to make this video. I've reflected a lot on this question. What should be next for Helldivers 2? And I keep flip-flopping between two different outcomes. On one hand, I'm like, yeah, absolutely. I want loads of new content to work through. I want to have loads of different mission types and I want to have different ways that I can progress in the game. But then I keep coming back to this point myself thinking, well, why? The game does exactly what it's supposed to do and it's doing it really well. And are we just being a little bit entitled perhaps as gamers? And I want to say this straight away. I'm one of those people. I'm not pointing the finger at other people. I am one of those people. I made a video last week or two weeks ago saying the top five things I want to see in Helldivers 2 and I went off on a tangent about all sorts of things. Helldivers 2 is a co-op horde shooter that is incredibly repetitive by design and that is how it's meant to be. If it gets boring, which after around 350 hours I can safely say it does, then move on to something new. That is totally fine and in fact I did this when Dragon's Dogma 2 released. I was bored of Helldivers 2 and I played that game for a few weeks, but after a while, I found myself thinking, hey, I wouldn't mind playing a few rounds of Helldivers 2. So I did, and guess what? I had a great time. I think this 
really highlights the nature of how Helldivers should be played. There will be moments where new additions and content drops bring back players, and we saw an example of this a couple of weeks back when they did the big balance patch. In fact, if we take a look at the graph here, we can see that the game spiked back up to around 90k players and then has slowly tapered off since to, at the time of this video, around 32,000 on Steam. I'm willing to bet that when the Illuminates get added to the game, we'll see the exact same pattern with perhaps a much more explosive number to start with before the inevitable drop off because there is simply nothing else to do other than the repetitive gameplay loop that does indeed get boring regardless of what enemies the game throws at you. This is not a sign of a failing game. Helldivers 2 is not failing, rather it's just starting to settle folks. And if we take a look at what I would say is the most similar game on the market at the moment, that's Deep Rock Galactic, which has also just had a pretty considerable content drop in the form of Season 5, we can see the exact same pattern. It jumped from around 13,000 players to 54,000 players over the release and free weekend that they put on, and it's now slowly tapering off to 25k. Again, the same can be seen with games like Darktide. These games settle to baselines and then bounce back up whenever there's something new to do, but by their very nature, they get boring and players move on to play something new and exciting like Shadow of the Earth Tray, the new Elden Ring expansion. Now this will be the same case for me when Space Marine 2 comes out in September and Punch Showdown 2.0 is coming out later in August. These are all games I'm really excited about and I will be taking breaks from Helldivers 2, but that does not mean that the game is dead to me and I'm not going to be playing it. It just means that like anybody else, I'm going to go and check out other games. In fact, I made a note of this and a comment on this on a stream earlier this week, and I think it might be quite useful to hear it now. You know, when the Illuminate come out, the numbers are going to fly through the roof again. And yeah, what they'll do is they'll fly up and then they'll, they'll trickle downwards because people will be done with it or whatever. That's fine. You know, if a game's cyclical, look at games like Path of Exile. Look at games like Diablo 3. Diablo 4's doing this as well. Even Diablo 2 does this. D uh, uh, Destiny, like... These games work on cycles. Path of Exile have even said themselves they deliberately timed. This is when Diablo 4 was out. This is when D3 was out. They deliberately used to time their season resets off season for Diablo 3. So gamers could switch between Diablo 3 and Diablo and Path of Exile. They recognized that people wanted to play both games and recognized that people aren't just going to play one game for the whole time. That's normal. You know, we're humans, we get bored. Now, I don't know what you think, folks, but I think when a game dev actually respects your time, gives you content to work through that's fun to play when you choose to play the game, doesn't decidedly give you FOMO by making sure that you have to be on a treadmill all the time and tie you into subscriptions and that sort of thing. I think this makes for A, a much more enjoyable experience and B, it's better for the gamers' heads. And I know that sounds ridiculous, but that, that feeling of being at a loss because you're not playing a game all the time, it's not a great feeling. And I've been there with games like World of Warcraft. I've been there with subscription MMOs. I've been there. And if you've been there, you will know what I mean. Feeling obligated to play a game to keep up and stay involved is a really awful feeling. And the older I get and the more I play games, and I guess the more valuable my time becomes as responsibilities inevitably increase as an adult, I just don't want that anymore. And that's why I think Helldivers 2 is doing everything absolutely correct in that regard. So, is Helldivers 2 dying? In my opinion, absolutely not. Now, should Arrowhead be doing something about these players dwindling off? That's the conversation that I'd like to have. If you've seen my previous videos, you'll know I have got an opinion on content they could be adding here, but I also flip-flop between, as I mentioned previously, whether they should be adding things like that or just be going, hey, do you know what? We've got a co-op horde shooter here that's absolutely excellent that will have this up and down sunset type nature cycle, and that's okay. But what do you think, folks? Sound off in the comments below. If you're looking for some interesting Helldivers 2 weapon combos, check out this next video. It's got you covered. Take care of yourselves, keep having fun, and I'll see you in the next one.